What is up, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about genes and gene expression. So, let's dive right in. So, what is gene expression? What is a gene? Here we have a duplicated chromosome, which you should be familiar with at this point. And as we unwind it and magnify it, you can see the solenoid fibers. And here we just see the DNA wrapped around the uh, histones forming nucleosomes. And then as we keep going further down, we basically just have DNA by itself. Now, what if I told you this section of the DNA is a blueprint for a protein, let's just call it protein A. And this protein A is actually um, plays a very important role. Um, it determines your hair color. And then this section here is the blueprint for another protein. And of course, just like protein A, this protein B is also functional. And let's say it determines your height. And then let's just say this section here makes uh, is a bl blueprint for uh, protein C. And this determines, ooh, I don't know, let's just say blood type. Okay. So basically, these DNA sequences that are the blueprint for functional proteins are called genes. Okay, it's functional proteins. What do I mean by functional proteins? Functional proteins meaning that they um, determine some aspect of your biology, you know, whether it's hair color, height, blood type, etc. Basically, everything. So we can call, for example, this part of the DNA gene 1 or and this will be we can call it gene 2 and then this here we can call it gene 3 so we can say gene 1 is the blueprint for protein A and then protein A is uh, you know responsible for determining your hair color gene 2 is the blueprint for protein B and what does protein B do well it determines your height okay so yeah so genes are just referring to these uh, these specific sections of DNA. Um, so what is gene expression? Gene expression. Oh, sorry, it's kind of messy. Gene expression. Gene expression just means the entirety of the process of taking DNA, using it to make protein, and then, you, and then having that protein um, play the functional role it's assigned to. Um, don't worry about the details for now. We'll get to we'll get to that in due time. But right now, just understand that's the big picture of what a gene is and what it means when someone says gene expression. And of course, just like every lesson, we need to introduce more vocabulary. And today's words are genotype. genotype and phenotype. Let's start with genotype. I mean, sorry, let's start with phenotype. Phenotype means your specific traits, the uh, end product of gene expression, such as hair color, intelligence, body weight, etc. And so the genotype refers to the DNA sequences responsible for these traits or characteristics. Or simply, the genotype is the DNA sequences of your genes. So, can we say one genotype defines one phenotype? Or that one gene determines one trait? Is there an intelligence gene? Is there a gene that regulates your body weight? Well, in short, no. You see, in reality, it's much more complicated than that. Most traits in the human body are polygenic. And I guess this is another new term, polygenic. Which means that um, the traits that we have are determined by the expression of many genes. And not only that, but environmental factors play a large role in determining who you are as well. The whole uh, nature 
versus nurture concept. So gene expression and um, how we are is very multifaceted. Let's see an example of polygenic expression, human eye color. Here we see a small sample of different eye colors, or I should say different eye color phenotypes. And in truth, we still don't have the complete picture of how eye color is regulated. So what do we know about eye color? Well, we know that melanin is the pigment responsible for the different colors. And basically, uh, the, more melanin you, the more melanin you have in your iris, the darker your, your eye is. And there are several types of melanin derived from uh, tyrosine, I believe in oxidized form. Uh, it actually forms like a uh, polymer. And uh, if you remember, tyrosine is an amino acid. So that's quite interesting. The processing and storage of this pigment in the eye so far has been linked to two main uh, genes in chromosome 15. However, though, there is a plethora of other genes um, that plays a role in determining your eye color, and they're all spread out all over your uh, genome, many different chromosomes. And, uh, and this list could be very different in the future as research progresses because like I said we still don't know the complete picture and this is just you know something as quote-unquote simple as eye color so as you can see gene expression and how uh, your traits are regulated can be very complicated and so the human genome encodes around 19,000 genes so far this number, of course, can definitely change as our technology improves because at the beginning, we thought the human beings encoded for 100,000 uh, genes, but that number has shrunk considerably, of course, as our techniques and research uh, improved over the years. And these genes range from anywhere from a few hundred base pairs to over 2 million in length, so pretty varied. Uh, however, the most interesting part is that all of these genes only account for 2% of your genome. Yeah, exactly. So 98% of your genome um, do not encode for any proteins. And uh, does not encode, uh, they're not genes. So most of, of the vast majority is just kind of... Uh, well, what is it, right? Well, some people call it junk DNA, which I really hate this term. I don't think a lot of people use this term term anymore, but um, I still hear from time to time, and it's really annoying because this 98% is not junk DNA just because it doesn't encode for any genes. What it is called, the proper term, is uh, non-coding. DNA, non-coding DNA, and these non-coding DNA um, is, is basically um, encodes information for regulatory factors for proper gene expression, such as transfer RNAs, which we'll get to later on. And in summary, we learned that genes are basically parts of your genome sections of DNA, okay, that are blueprints for functional proteins. And these proteins define our uh, biological processes and traits, and such as uh, observable, observable ones like hair color or height to less tangible things, such as, such as your DNA polymerase, blood type, your sense of humor, your ability to metabolize certain sugars, etc., and etc. And remember, the difference between genotype and phenotype. Genotype being the exact DNA sequence of, of your genes, while the phenotype is the direct result of gene expression, the final product. And keep, it, and keep in mind also that most um, traits are polygenic. So most phenotypes are polygenic. Basically, it means that it's determined by more than one gene. 
there are roughly 19,000 uh, human genes in our, in our genome, so far anyway. And, but this only accounts for 2% of our genome, right? The vast majority of our genome, the 98%, is called non-coding DNA. And this is re responsible for very important uh, regulatory elements, in which we will talk about later on. So a question that might have your that might be on your mind right now is that how do we get exactly from gene to protein? How does our body take the DNA sequence and use that to produce a functional protein? Well, we'll talk about that next lesson. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see everyone later.